The war in Ukraine has changed the world. And now we need to think about where this world is moving to, together. That's why Meme Business School is launching the nationwide educational project Reinforce UA, where the world's greatest minds will share their ideas and insights. And you will get their experience, change your perspective and discover what changes should the business be ready for, before and after the victory. Every week on reinforceua.com Now we are ready to start. Dear colleagues and friends in Ukraine and from all the world, I'm Vyacheslav Pokatilo and on behalf of MIM Kyiv Business School, I'm happy to welcome you on Reinforce UA project. Uh, the project was designed in order to support, intellectual support, Ukrainian business community. And we intended to widen discussion about the present and the future of Ukrainian world and invited world renowned intellectuals to share their views on most demanding problems the humanity is facing currently. This is especially important at the current situation and the critical situation in Ukraine, which uh, uh, which was suffered from the aggression of the Russian uh, and, and torn by the war. The project was made possible due to the general support of Bogdan Havrilshin Family Foundation and four major business uh, management associ associations, uh, AACSB, AMBA, FEMD, and CIMAN. Uh, I should mention also the 50 Thinkers organization, whom we, uh, which, 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 which we cooperate in and which brings a lot of speakers uh, to our audience. Before I shall give the floor to our uh, honorable guest today, I would like reminding you that you can ask questions uh, by clicking Q&A button, and I kindly you ask you not to use chat for this purpose. Uh, the questions will be uh, addressed uh, uh, after the presentations. And I am honored to welcome Professor Stefan Orishkovic, Stefan Orishkovic in our project. Professor Orishkovic is a scientist and entrepreneur who holds a strong belief in ethics and that ethics and science are pivotal uh, for sustainable development and he advocates for moving beyond zero-sum fallacies and remaining uh, and refraining from viewing the world uh, and the market purely as a competitive threat. He holds the position of the president of supervisory board of IACD Bled School of Management and is a member of both the European Academy of Sciences and Art, the Royal Society of Medicine, and Professor Orishkovich has an extensive publication records with plentiful papers and several books. He holds the position of the president of the supervisory board of, um, uh, okay, this I've already mentioned, sorry. And besides, uh, he is an entrepreneur, investor, major investor of M Plus Group, um, uh, which made an impressive uh, growth uh, from a boutique company uh, to a big uh, multi billion, multi hundreds of billions uh, business, uh, which employs uh, uh, more than 13,000 people. Um, today's our discussion will be about how to create a winning business ecosystems. The world is uh, 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 well known and widely used, but uh, we need to address it practically. It looks like. Professor Reshkovich, are you with us? Yes. Ah, great, great. <laughs> okay, uh, welcome. I, 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 there were some technical issues with, with this sound, but hopefully everything now is okay. And um, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, agreement to uh, participate in our project. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to, to listen to you. Um, so I give you the floor for, for presentation. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi, Irina. Thank you for for kindly inviting me for this opportunity to share thoughts with uh, uh, business community and academic community in Ukraine. Uh, thank you, Vyacheslav, for uh, uh, your kind introduction. Uh, I'm really honored uh, with this invitation, and uh, uh, I would now just need to to see uh, how we can share the the presentation. Uh, 
yeah okay we already did it once today so uh it works it looks like like i will do it twice so it's not by chance uh, uh so, so uh basically uh, my intention is to really have as much as possible open dialogue and i really encourage you to ask and comment whatever you think might be of your interest or whatever thoughts or second thoughts you have on what i'm going to say um i am impressed with what what your school is managing to achieve in this really very challenging uh, circumstances uh, and uh, it's it's really a, a big test of everything what you can learn about leadership uh, and especially about leadership in a difficult times so the topics i have chosen was in a way intentionally uh, selected to reflect several things that i am personally very much focused on and also uh, giving me an opportunity to share not only my uh, 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 intellectual knowledge or what I learned, but also uh, uh, an experience that I have with the business. What I think it's very important because, uh, you know, it's easy to uh, teach others about theories, but what you uh, personally experienced or learned in the practice has, a, I think, a bigger strength. And anyway, I think uh, in a education we should always focus to three things one is uh, is uh, a problem solving the second one is is uh, a case building so that we understand things and interpret them through through the cases what i will do in the third part of my pres presentation uh, uh, and and uh, about the company i i establish and that the third one is definitely uh, open collaborative uh, uh, discussion uh, so um, you know the title we have here is it i strongly believe and i think all the uh, everything what we learned as a mankind through the history is is giving the same message it takes more than one it's uh, always uh, whatever we achieved uh, no matter how uh, creative or even genius we are it always takes society in uh, in greek times aristotle said uh, that only uh, two type of persons can live outside the society uh, uh, one is if you are a god or an animal and uh, so basically uh, as uh, Vyacheslav said uh, ecosystem is really uh, a word that has a, a big uh, 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 impact now and everyone is speaking about ecosystems but uh, difficult to understand and even more difficult to implement so I will start a very in a in a three parts the first one is a broad one and I think it's I have chosen this because I think it's really important that we understand the uh, the uh, fundamentals and the background of the of the of uh, our uh, practices and uh, what we advocate so the most important moment in the human uh, history or the history of the mankind is the moment that some researchers anthropologists anthropologists uh, uh, allocate to 4.5 thousand years ago some say there are evidence in in uk uh, 6 thousand years ago when actually people created ability to uh, 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 when the hunter gatherers uh, were capable to work together and that actually it triggered a cascade of uh, cognitive development leading to creation of languages, diverse human cultures and technologies across the world. The technologies is probably the most important because it's the last one and the most uh, impactful. Uh, 
why this is so important, uh, our ability to work together, because that's how we create our capacities to develop whatever you can see or experience around ourselves. And the most importantly, technologies. So, you know, what is the problem with the world we are living in is that our our ability to develop advanced technologies, even destructive technologies, has grown much faster, especially in the last uh, five decades or seven decades, much faster than our morals and our ability to work together. And this discrepancy is probably the biggest challenge uh, for the civilization we developed and we are sharing. Um, that's something you know that should be uh, focus should get much more focus and research. But the discrepancy between our ability uh, of moral thinking and behaving and of working together beyond the tribes or nations we believe in or we belong in is. Uh, is lagging behind our capacity to destroy our environment, environment while using technologies. And then when we spoke about business ecosystem, uh, it's part of this same challenge. It's uh, uh, our capacity to work together, doing business together, and not only focusing on a competitive side of the business and not only on the market within the market within the competitive uh, environment but but within that environment capacity to to work together and without this capacity there is no chance uh, that we can develop uh, uh, any kind of even simple ecosystem so these are uh, the research I was mentioning, and here are the links uh, in Scientific American about this recent uh, research, uh, which says that the essential difference between chimpanzee and, and humans is that uh, one person is thinking the same way and talking the same language we, we are talking and uh, thinking, and that that's our... Uh, 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 instrument to work together. Now, if we move to the theory, there are basically two approaches. One is what you obviously all know and remember from your education is, is Thomas Hobbes and, and his uh, book Leviathan. And it says bellum omnium contra omnes, that this is the basic state uh, status of uh, human society. It it means the war of all against all. Uh, Hobbes says that this is profound element of our nature, and that uh, if any two men desire the same thing, which is nevertheless that they cannot both enjoy, they become enemies. So we are greedy, and we are competitive, and we are aggressive. Uh, because we want to accumulate fortune and uh, uh, expand our territories. Uh, and through this, we come to the war. The, but this is, you know, and then, you know, there are many films, more than uh, theaters and expansion of this uh, understanding of human society, uh, like the one I have here, you know, uh, saying these civilized people, they eat each other. So I'm not a monster, I'm just the head of the curve. And, you know, I was just, I will I will come next to the book, which says, you know, uh, the, the fantastic book, I, I think it will be also interesting to read everywhere around the world, world not only in, in, uh, in uh, 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 areas where there are conflicts and wars, although, I, I think there are less and less territories where we are free from suffering. You are suffering there. And the book is by uh, Christopher Blattman, 
a professor at Chicago University. He is explaining uh, in a very intelligent and productive way what brings us to the war. And, and the major message is that it's because society or its leaders ignores those costs of the war or, we, or they are willing to pay the cost to achieve a certain objective. And then he his uh, book is based on the five biggest arguments or theories why uh, what brings us to the conflict, not only on the global level or a national level, but also between the gangs in New York or uh, around the world. And the first one is probably uh, the most interesting one. Uh, uh, his argument is that the, the societies that are uh, run by dictatorship or without democracy are very prone to come to the war because the the person on the top is does not feel any risk or any costs of what they are going to create for the society. And there is an excellent example here, the study that was looking into how members of the Congress vote over, or voted over the last 150 years about question of entering to the war or not, or uh, 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 conscription or anti-conscription, if they have children, uh, male children that are between 18 and 24 years old. And the message is that uh, they voted against. And this brings me immediately to many concrete situations uh, around the world where we see uh, the people bringing nations to the war, but not bringing their children to the war, or even relatives or brothers or sisters. And, and this is just the first level of argument. So when do you don't have people running the societies that are accountable and sharing the uh, uh, destiny of the society and of their decisions, the, the chance that we are going to go towards the Hobbes idea of society becomes uh, more uh, a higher prob probability. Now, on the opposite of, of this story is a, is a beautiful book written by Nikos Christakis, the person I really appreciate very much. He's a professor of medical sociology. He was at Harvard and now he's at Yale. And, and the, his book, uh, blueprint the evolutionary origins of good society is arguing with a lot of interesting arguments against the idea of society that Hobbes is developing and that uh, the central thesis of the book is that uh, uh, the the idea uh, of good relations is also encoded in our genes because of many generations and and that he is showing a lot of examples of the societies which are capable to develop a, a, a co collaborative, cooperative, and a, 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 in a way, ecosystem of peace and collaboration. So uh, let's let's move now to the second part of 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 our presentation or discussion. The first part was basically dedicated to the idea of understanding how human society works and what elements should be strengthened to make the fundamentals of our societies as a collaborative, uh, good, and peaceful. Uh, and we can definitely discuss this uh, later on. Now, if we move to the uh, business level, what makes business systems collaborative and if this is advantage or not at all. Um, the, the idea of ecosystem in the business first relies on the idea that we should think holistically and that we should, uh, through this uh, holistic approach, develop our capacity to include 
uh, more complex relations on many different levels, including human resources, technologies, uh, uh, clients and markets and communication uh, uh, that, that creates uh, uh, our business uh, systems or companies capable to resonate with broad and much uh, complex uh, information systems. And you know that that the key problem with with the market is uh, the the idea that that not all of us have equal access to to information, and those which have uh, better access to more complex information have a better position at the market. And that, this is very clear. The 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 one that understands. And today, what will happen with the British pound or US dollar or euro uh, based on information in next uh, three months can obviously make a fortune on that. And that also applies to any other uh, type of information. And so if you look into the business ecosystem, basically the first idea is, okay, we can focus on business ecosystem itself. So how we create a value for customer and through this, we create a value for our company. But the company that is in the middle of, of this environment have a better chances to develop competitive advantage towards the other competitor if it's part of two other important ecosystems. One is innovation, what means integrating knowledge uh, and exploiting capacities for business. So it's clear if you look into the history, the winning companies are those that are in, more innovative. And, you know, in these days, this is conditio sine qua non of the survival. We all speak every day and uh, uh, see the agendas for the conference. AI in uh, in tourism, AI in uh, 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 in in the steel industry, AI in aviation, AI in in everything, and that's all about innovation. How we react uh, and and not focus on our system as a closed uh, uh, subsystem here, but also open to other ecosystems of knowledge that uh, that can bring uh, innovation to our business ecosystem and and that's naturally what brings us to the knowledge ecosystem how to generate new knowledge and new technologies and the the companies even the business ecosystems that are not open to these two other ecosystems will definitely face a big challenges how to survive in, in maybe three to five to, to even uh, not to speak about 10 years. So when we speak about business ecosystem, when we try to uh, uh, quantify the previous uh, uh, model, we can see that uh, uh, when we focus on innovation, it's uh, finding synergies through different uh, models uh, that we can use to be open to innovation within the company, but also to innovate, to be receptive for the innovation outside our uh, narrow business ecosystem. We should also understand what and how our shareholders can bring as an added value to the uh, ecosystem or the companies we are creating. And I will tell you uh, based on, on the uh, experience of uh, a company where I am also shareholder, how it works and what it can bring. Uh, then how and what is your cu uh, culture uh, and capacity to make deals uh, with the others? What can mean top level deals uh, in the terms of acquisitions, but also deals in the terms of contracts and uh, and positive communication communication with potential partners, and then the big big uh, uh, world of investors and the relations with potential investors. Because if you are not from others, uh, you 
will not have a capacity to grow fast and 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 then keep your competitive capacity also um so the question is you know uh what type of leaders are the good ones for the idea and philosophy of ecosystem and if you look i randomly uh, i have randomly chosen uh, several of them uh, running the most interesting business ecosystems uh, or or business companies around the world and it will be it would be very interesting to discuss we can do this later choosing any of these uh, uh, leaders how they fit into the profile of traditional uh, vertical single de single decision maker model or a, a person that is capable to to attract and communicate and relate with all these four uh, uh, big elements. And, you know, it's really easy to simplify when we discuss how people work and what makes them uh, successful. Um, uh, the question is, uh, why investors, consumers, and empl employees uh, most of the time or sometimes prefer organization with a strong leader and the question is if the strong leader leader is is opposite sui generis again uh, to the idea of business ecosystem uh, so we should ask ourselves three questions uh, who is acceptable to participate in the ecosystem who decides on the distribution of the value created among the partners and what level of cost specialization is required? These are very practical questions. Uh, when you run the company as an investor or CEO, that you really need to understand in a very practical, intelligent terms on, on the daily basis, if you want to be successful uh, uh, in, in managing companies and the groups. And now uh, for the end, uh, a short story about uh, uh, M Plus Group, that is the company I'm uh, with my uh, uh, family, a majority shareholder, and that's very important. Uh, Vyacheslav j said just uh, you know a few words before. Uh, it, it's a really, I think, success story. We were capable to grow. Uh, uh, in a, in a less than five years, uh, from 300 to 1,300 employees, from 3 million euro revenues to, uh, you know, definitely over 330 in 2023, but with some acquisitions on the pipeline, maybe which even much more. And since we are a, a stock a publicly listed company, please don't understand this as and a suggestion for, for investment, but we, we are definitely functioning globally and with a lot of global clients and using modern technologies. And uh, I would say really showing capacity to, to, to be sustainable, competitive. Uh, we follow ESG rules, our company, uh, uh, has uh, issued ESG bond and we are uh, obliged to have more than 51% of uh, women at the top position uh, in in next three years. Uh, 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 but we already have 43. Uh, and so, you know, I, will, I would focus on the key moment of, of this story, not on the technology, Although the technology is crucial and it's impossible to survive the market without being really innovative, open to knowledge and, and uh, uh, receptive. But I will focus on the, on the only first moment and element of, of uh, ecosystem, which is human uh, uh, element. The, the information I am really most proud of when we speak about our group is is attrition rate you know and i must say i was not even aware how 
uh, economically and financially and even uh, in the terms of company's valuation, this element is important. So the story is the following. How many people leave your company in the on the annual basis affects the capacity of your company to be efficient and profitable uh, and competitive. And it's probably the most important element because when people are leaving your com company, it's a signal that's, that something is wrong inside and that you know everyone should leave and will leave whenever the person gets a better offer somewhere else. But it's not only about uh, payroll, about benefits, perks, or you know, uh, 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 long future ahead. It's how they feel within the company because of all these elements, and because you have to recruit other people, train other people, replace, and so on. The costs uh, of people leaving are immense, and if you want to have a productive business ecosystem, the first important element is people. You should find a way how you uh, attract talent, but also how you keep talent uh, within the company. And no simple, cheap formulas like buying uh, a table tennis and giving them ability to drink coffee in the break works anymore. Fortunately, uh, not. Uh, um, so, uh, what we are doing, in, and I will now end with this, is we are really paying uh, a, a great attention to our workforce as a part of this ecosystem. And we are not looking into this in a, at the ex, uh, accidental level, but also scientifically. What you see on the screen is, is a, a paper that is accepted and it's already available, but will be officially published probably tomorrow after tomorrow. Uh, a big research we did about uh, uh, how uh, work from home in our company. And I'm really proud, uh, not because of the, of the interesting team we assembled to make this research, but because we are really paying a, a, a huge attention to find out what our people think and what they accept and what they reject, and uh, and and we intend to do this. You know, it's it's a very uh, uh, respectable uh, international scientific journal with a, a high impact factor, and and this study is the first study that uh, we have more than five thousand respondents that is uh, uh, doing research uh, with the sample of the people that are not only participating in the study uh, 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 because they volunteer, but it's the first data about people that are uh, really uh, taking a choice of working from home. And we have now 83% altogether people working from home uh, uh, because they, that's uh, not voluntarily, that's that was their choice when they were employed, but now they have to work from home. And the results are really interesting, uh, both for the company and for the scientific uh, uh, public. So uh, uh, when we speak about new generations, I think everything what I mentioned as a value, as a model, will be even more important. When you look into the research on how they think, what they appreciate, how they behave, it's always uh, 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 the system and the values of uh, collaboration, uh, care about environment, uh, 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 quest for freedom, respect, uh, respect for diver diversity, and so on. Uh, the, the last thing I would say is, you know, my personal uh, strategy is okay you can own the company as a as a single person but my philosophy was first i will always share everything what i do and what i own with my with my wife so it's not one it takes more than one it's two now we involved 
uh, almost all of our three uh, kids uh, and the oldest son who is only 32 is the guy who is running actually the company and the most uh, responsible for this incredible growth. I gave him all authorities to run the company when he was 28 and his two other colleagues uh, were uh, uh, 29 and 33. Uh, and, and then this is not enough. It's not family. It's, it's then we went public because I wanted to share our strategy and our strengths with other investors. Not, now we have 23 investment funds and several hundred small investors, and we are uh, building a next and next and next circle of uh, people that uh, feel uh, when you ask them, who is the owner of this company? There are hundreds of people that would gladly say, yes, we are the owners. Uh, we are the ecosystem that is making uh, a success. It's uh, challenging. It needs uh, different styles of uh, uh, governance, leadership, and management. But I strongly believe it's a, it's a future because I believe also the people uh, are inclining more to what Christakis advocates than what Hobbes advocates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Roshkovich. Uh, I would say, well, no, we will need at least a couple of hours uh, just uh, to touch those subjects you have just mentioned. <laughs> so we have a time limit. So, mm, um, I even don't know what to start with. Let, let's start with with, uh, with with your last slides. You mentioned about you you, you spoke a lot about people at the beginning and the end, and the difference and the different approach of generations. By the way, we have somebody asking uh, you kindly to provide a link to to this study. Uh, uh, I understood when it was published, if, if possible. Um, uh, if you have it now, put it on the on the chat. If not, we can resend it to this the point in the future. So the generations, uh, demography, people are different from different generations. In business school, we also uh, mentioned this. Um, and um, if I'm not mistaken, you have a master's degree in gerontology. Yes. So you, you know very well how a person changed with the age. Yes. Uh, but the age of demography affects not only person, individuals, they affect societies, countries, uh, and globally, what we have uh, now observed uh, um, is some kind of a global uh, effect of, in particular, demographic situation okay. in Europe. Uh, uh, what, what kind of, of consequences, uh, in your opinion, should businesses, let's not speak about the global policies, but preferably it will be too complicated. But businesses should should make uh, from these demographic changes and biases, I would say, especially those businesses which are located in Europe, uh, which is aging uh, uh, continent, uh, uh, facing the uh, huge challenges uh, uh, related to this aging and not growing and not having the, uh, enough young people. For business, not 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 to speak about the wars, etc. <laughs> it's a little bit too complicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I I think this is really a huge challenge, uh, and we are still slaves of old thinking. I I'll just give you one example. You know, I was I was I'm I'm professor at the School of Medicine in Zagreb, and I was basically now just recently speaking at the council because the school made decision that that uh, that everyone who is 65 or older should retire and you know my argument was that we as a as a mankind were fighting for hundreds of thousands of years to live longer and now when we have uh, uh, ability and capacity of people being 65 expected a life, a life, a life expectancy and 65 is uh, so they would probably live in the normal conditions for next uh, 25 years for or even more 
and in full capacity. And then you follow the bureaucratic idea that they should go and retire. And, and you know, example is, for example, Singapore, which has, I think now 28% of the workforce above 65. Because, you know, we should look every individual and that's what I learned in US. One of, of, of people I know well at, uh, at Harvard is, 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 or not only one, many people uh, are over 80 running the most impos important projects. It's only a question about between the person and the institution. Do you want me? Do I want you? If we each want other to be in the partnership yeah. and work together in the future, that should continue. So this is an example of, you know, Europe lag lagging behind following stereotypes which are really outdated. And, and so the consequences of a uh, person in full capacity, intellectually capable to work uh, next 20 years, being forcefully retired, are uh, enormous for health system, for pensions, for uh, health of the person and mental uh, status and so on. So that's, you know, starting from that edge of uh, gerontological, I would say, uh, argument you mentioned. On the other side, you know, for new generations that are coming, uh, Europe really does not have any strategy uh, how to deal this with this problem in organized way. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 I think it's, it's uh, really chaotic. It's very political. It's uh, without uh, addressing the real uh, data and arguments on what, how much, and how many people you would need in the future. And, uh, you know, my, my company or our company, that's really much more precise. We opened, for example, Turkey as a big market. Uh, we have now there over 7,000 employees. And we, we are doing, I think, what Europe should have done uh, in a strategic way. So these people are employees of European company and Turkish at the same time, and they are young and educated uh, with high level of IT capacities. Uh, and, uh, and so there is no need that people should move and travel elsewhere uh, from their countries if they can earn a, a, a fair uh, a, a salary and feel good. Uh, but But my key message would be, we should move out of stereotypes, of uh, populist uh, vocabulary, of ideological uh, uh, messages, and really honestly answer the questions we really need to answer. I don't know if you know we can then discuss any aspect of that, but but that's oh, yeah. understanding. And and we as a company made a huge advantage with this strategy. And we were also uh, preparing to, to invest in, in Ukraine. And, and uh, just before the war, I was, I was a big advocate of, of working with Ukraine because of uh, intelligence, capacity, uh, similar culture. It, it can't be closer, uh, but not, uh, you know, my idea is always not, don't move people from the country, if possible. No, well, in, in case of Ukraine, um... Many people were forced to yeah. to to know. Um, like well, I, I I did hope. I have the, I have a hope that you know the solution. You know the idea as a professional, <laughs> professor, professor, as 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 an expert in 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 old people. You know we have a currently difficult situation and choices uh, in front of us and uh, also uh, on on the society and uh, uh, with respect to various kind of businesses. Well, let, let's move in direction on, on the same way, let's say, especially in Europe. Uh, you mentioned Turkey. Turkey, of course, is a, a bit different case, uh, but um, you're also active in Germany and in Eastern European countries, Slavia. 
Albania, Croatia, which more or less uh, uh, similar. And uh, uh, this situation that new generations, there's a lack of people, and companies should improve uh, uh, improve productivity and uh, and, uh, and innovate in this respect is more or less a common uh, common subject uh, everywhere. And now comes a solution, and solution is called AI. Uh, uh, and uh, and you you wrote papers in AI and you are active in in both in fields of medicine medical services where AI uh, is is a uh, provides a good promise uh, for the future and at the same time your major business where you invested uh, 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 always uh, or very often uh, mentioned as a field in which AI can substitute people. So we have a, a huge fields of, of employment, uh, medical employment in particular, another where an eye can substitute people. Uh, uh, how do you feel about it? Uh, what, what, what probably it's, it's, it's wrong, people will not be substituted and uh, they will find another work, but there are different opinions and there is uh, some kind of a, a grounded fears uh, uh, from the people uh, uh, in different countries uh look it's it's uh, uh, definitely as i said previously it's you you can't survive without innovation and with without employing new technologies and we are really very good at that uh also you know i i mentioned we are family uh business also uh, uh, our oldest son is running company, but the younger son is is doing PhD in uh, big data at Oxford. Uh, a, a daughter is doing also graduated from Harvard, doing also applied mathematics and now uh, uh, PhD in Berkeley. And we strongly believe in in knowledge and in uh, uh, big data and artificial intelligence and large large language models and all this stuff. But on the other side, I never accepted to be part of someone else's hype. You know, we, we, we are always trying to focus and concentrate and look into what's happening in reality. And so when we looked into what our company is doing, big part is we have now three big branches. One is, is customers relation. The other one is big HR group. And the third one is digital marketing. And when we focus on that, we really looked into the procedures we have with customers, you know, what we are doing. And we identified uh, 13 types of procedures. Then we looked into each of these 13 from the point of view of uh, challenge of uh, uh, LLM models and, and big data. And we then we now we know which of the procedures are very uh, dependent already on on artificial intelligence. But we also know which procedures are completely all almost untouched and will stay for a long as as untouched uh, because they are complex. They need people. They need. Uh, 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 empathy, they need intelligence, they need crea creativity, which, uh, and and it's the kind of, you know, five-star service with our clients where the, the on the other side, it's a person. And, and so we are trying to be very realistic with that and not be, you know, sub submitted to the hype. Uh, and, and then the third moment is that people are always the first even with very advanced AI based companies, they are run by people. People are doing uh, services and things. And if you don't have respect for your people, if they don't feel good, there is no AI in the world that will make you a successful company. So good, 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 good to hear. It's always people, it's always respect deep respect for everyone around you uh, i think respect brings uh, progress and and brings success you know on the short term of course you can bully uh, around yourself you can think that that steve jobs was successful because he was bullying people 
but then you are really taking historic lessons wrong. I, I think uh, bullies always lose. The question is only cost. Um, well, there's a t time lap loop for a special. No? It depends on how in, in, uh, during what time we, we consider all these things. But uh, of course, this is another uh, subject of discussion. But you, you provoked, you, you mentioned your, your key, uh, children, uh, which are, uh, some of them are in business, some of them are in science. And in, in, your, in your LinkedIn profile, you indicated that you're a scientist and entrepreneur and dedicated to blend in the position, positive values of both fields. Uh, I was amused and uh, very happy to read this. And um, I want to ask, in my opinion, it's not an easy blend. I mean, you know, to, to, to do it. <laughs> and a lot of challenges um, um, when trying to simultaneously be, uh, you know, scientist and, and, and businessman, entrepreneur. Um, um, would you agree? And if yes, what kind of, of challenges the most in during your life you faced when trying really to use it won't just our, our, our best our best features of both fields uh, look I'm, it's it's really not just you know lip service uh we see uh you know i i'm a lot in behavioral sciences and human behavior is is really fundamental for anything we are doing uh doesn't matter how technologies are developed or not and understanding uh, uh how and why people are performing or not performing in the company how clients are, are are thinking what they expect how you make them happy you know it's all uh, uh not only a question of commons it's also a scientific question and we are trying to answer everything what we can, asking the wisest people in the room uh, what should be done. But also, of course, they need to be practical and problem solving oriented. If someone is just selling you uh, a, a general theories, even at the business school, the lecturers that were not capable to bring uh, experience and examples and cases from the real world, no one wants to listen anymore. So it's kind of, you know, a natural marriage. And it's becoming more and more uh, connected. Uh, good. I'm happy to, to look forward for this for this kind of future. And then uh, let's, let's move to, uh, let's say, the subject of, of lecture, this wonderful word of ecosystem. Um, and you you showed that this is not only about business. Obviously, it's not only about business. It's about other uh, fields of this. Uh, so we, we can probably not to limit ecosystems to the idea of this business model like a platform uh, 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 for, for everything because platform assumes somebody or some company or whatever managing all this. Is. My question would be, to what extent extent ecosystem is uh, some kind of a deliberately created or could be deliberately created and to what extent it should emerge uh, from uh, let's say environment and and condition uh, uh, existing this environment uh, outside uh, the company so it's more or less uh, some kind of a theoretical uh, question but uh, practically probably understand if you speak about let's say for example how to engage uh, a knowledge building organization like university business school or whatever into the company uh, fields uh, not based uh, purely on cost benefits um, uh, reasons what 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 will work it's tools or environment or what would you mention this intentional or emergent look, look I, I mean uh, uh, my children children are criticizing me when I quoting too much books, you know. But this is some uh, academic environment, you know. So I'll do that. There is a fantastic book, Genius of Location. It's it's about hypothesis that in the history there was always a certain place where everything what is important uh, was happening uh, for two hundred years or more. Like you know, 
uh, Edinburgh or Vienna or Athens or Mumbai or whatever, you know, or uh, uh, in in uh, in Shenzhen in in China, I think, and so on. Uh, when you bring a certain quantity of creative people in to interaction and give them freedom to communicate, to express themselves, to come out with ideas and to, uh, to gratify those which are brave and creative, you just leave this also to the, to the community because the community of free and creative will bring up, up something what you never expected and you never can plan. So my uh, biggest plan on the level of strategy or where you act is I look around and always look for people I miss or I would love to bring to this community. And, and then leave them to, to, to talk uh, about uh, problem solving or ideas of creation, you know. And that's why I feel that uh, the progress of the company is completely directly related to uh, the level of influential, creative, and free people we have in our community that we call M plus group. Guys from uh, from investment funds, we go to their, them and we ask them, look guys, what you can teach us from your experience about other companies you invested? Or our advisory board or our uh, partners, we have a lot of uh, uh, shareholders uh, in the companies that we acquired. Uh, we, we made 17 acquisitions in in uh, less than four years, but we still have almost always the people that owned company 100% before, they are our partners, we have discussion, and that's, you know, community, what you can call ecosystem. And, and, and if you have a fertile ground, that's where the flowers grow. Um, we have already time almost out and we need to wrap up, but I, I can't but ask a question. You recently became the uh, president of the board of the business school of, of, uh, of, of blood management. Uh, what what is what is your your first message? What is your message? What in your opinion business school on how in your opinion business school should change uh, in order to uh, uh, educate and uh, prepare and build new uh, generation of, of managers that uh, are better skilled or with other ideas? What 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 is your main message? What 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 is your main recommendation about changes, if any changes necessary uh, for business school to implement? Okay, then I will start in the standard academic way. I will quote all the research first. There is a fantastic paper uh, fr from Professor Achemoglu from uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I think he published this last year. He was analyzing uh, Denmark and US, what is happening with the companies uh, uh, that have CEOs that graduated from business schools as compared to those that are not. And there, there was a, a worrisome pattern showing that, that uh, leading business schools in US and Denmark, more in US, are educating managers to become cost cutters, lay off people, and save costs. To, of course, get bonuses. And less about development, creativity, ecosystems we speak, you know, new ideas, new technologies, and so on. So, you know, uh, uh, the business schools of the future will really have to and I think everyone is thinking about that, should also answer the question, what is the profile of the future leaders we need and want to educate? And not only leadership level, but also skills and values and culture and so on. Uh, because the people we are looking at here, uh, uh, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, millennials, uh, they have different values and industries will follow the values because the values are creating needs. 
and you can't sell the people something they don't appreciate or based on appreciation need you know and and so this is very important the the attitudes of the new generation will influence a lot industries uh, products uh, and and the companies and the managers of the future should be the ones that would resonate with with that it's not easy process it's not just uh, you know one way street but it's already there and and i see the schools that are going into this direction i hope that uh, we will work together with you know, irina and and your team there on on some joint projects we are discussing uh there is a lot of room to work together uh, but it should be that that direction great Professor Ashkovic, it was a great pleasure talking to you, intellectual delights. Uh, uh, a lot of subjects uh, could be mentioned, and uh, I feel sorry that we don't have enough time, and hopefully we'll be able to meet in the future. Uh, I'm a bit reluctant to invite you to Ukraine right now, though it's possible, uh, but uh, I do look forward uh, for the day when you will be able to come to visit our school, to meet with our students, because we still have chances to compete with AI in, in, in building people. Well, and the business is uh, still about people and with people rather than with uh, with machines, uh, even intellectual machines or whatever. Uh, let philosophers discuss uh, whether they have conscious or not conscious and how they will be. <laughs> we will not go into this at present, not very scientific, uh, let's say, uh, discussion, um, uh, rather theoretical. Uh, with this, uh, I... Um, um, like to wrap up this discussion and um, invite our participants uh, uh, to share uh, the links uh, uh, and, um, and those who will not have not been able to join us today um, uh, to look at the website and uh, see the records uh, uh, for this really very insightful um, uh, insightful discussion and presentation. Uh, our next meeting on the project of Reinforce UA will uh, uh, be on the 14th of uh, of December, it is uh, as far as I remember Thursday, uh, not on Wednesday, uh, because uh, of different uh, reasons. And our guest will be Herman Simon. Um, uh, Professor Reshkovich mentioned today a lot of books, and uh, please everybody look on 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 the wall behind Professor Reshkovich. You need to read a lot, and there are a lot of ideas are spreading. And one of these ideas is, is about hidden uh, champions and about hidden uh, companies, which do, we don't know. We, we are learning in business schools in particular about different cases about known companies, uh, and this is a typical some kind of availability bias uh, or uh, or selection bias. Uh, when we uh, um, make our conclusions based on a minor amount of companies. There are a lot of companies which are successful, which provide good businesses, uh, uh, practices uh, without being known uh, and being, being very public. Uh, so I invite everybody to join us on the 14th of December at 6 p.m. And with this, once again, Professor Ashkovic, it was a great pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, let's uh, have uh, uh, further discussions on this subject, uh, both on different forums. But particularly, we would like to have you visiting uh, Kiev uh, one day. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know that Professor Purg, uh, who is chairman of the Bled School, is working closely with Irina on very concrete projects, and and so we will we will do these things together. I'm sure. Great. Great. The war in Ukraine has changed the world, and now we need to think about where this world is moving to, together. That's why MIM Business School is launching the nationwide educational project Reinforce UA, where the world's greatest minds will share their ideas and insights, and you will get their experience, change your perspective and discover what changes should the business be ready for before and after the victory. Every week on reinforceua.com.